So you're probably asking yourself, what in the world is Lily talking about when she says unrealistic luxury wish list? So obviously we are no strangers to wish lists here in the luxury community. You know, obviously like when you got your eye on some things, things that you want to get, you kind of put them in a little wish list and kind of help yourself prioritize and decide what you want to get and maybe in what order. And this unrealistic luxury wish list is full of items that have my heart. These are things that I want. And if I were in a perfect world with no restrictions, no limitations, I would have all of them. But it might be because the items on here are a little bit of an extortionate price, which happens pretty often here in the luxury world. It might be because the items are not really practical for my lifestyle and, you know, the expected use of this item. Or it might be that realistically, I'm just not able to get my hands on these items. So we're going to go through my unrealistic luxury wish list. And just a quick caveat, you are not going to see any Hermes Birkins, Kelly's or Chanel classic flaps because for me, those are a given. And those of you that are seasoned subscribers, those of you that are members of the family, you all know that I want those and I do not need to bore you with telling you about them. So instead, let's get into my unrealistic luxury wish list. Now, first up on the list is an item that you all have seen me try on on this channel. And it was something that I was not expecting to try on and certainly not something that I was expecting to fall in love with, but I did. And that is the Bulgari Serpenti Viper Ring with the diamonds. Now, there are two versions of this ring that I love, but I'm not gonna be getting either one of them. There's one version where the little snake wraps around your finger twice, and then there's a less expensive version where it only wraps around your finger once. But regardless of if it's a single or a double, this ring has a really high price tag on it. The singular version is like between eight and $9,000. The double version is between 15 and $16,000. And that just feels like a lot of money for a ring that doesn't have like, let's be honest, huge diamonds in it. Don't get me wrong, they are sizable diamonds, but I mean, that's like the price of an engagement ring, right? Like in terms of like a ring that I would just buy for myself and that's pretty flashy, like I wouldn't wear it every single day. I do not need to be spending anywhere from like eight or nine to 15 or $16,000 with tax. I mean, the double version is creeping up to $20,000. <laughs> so even though, I mean, like, honestly, like if there are any sugar daddies out there, like, let me know. I'm happy to receive a Serpenti Viper ring from you. But other, I don't see any other way where there is a world that I would see myself spending that much money on a ring that's very specific and something that is too flashy for my everyday life. Moving on to the next item. Now, this is actually something that I don't think I've ever talked about on my channel. And I don't think I've ever shown you all on my channel, but it is something that I have been honestly admiring afar for years, but for so many different reasons, I am not gonna be buying this item. And it is this <laughs> crazy and over the top Gucci jacquard chair with like this little octopus squid print on it. <laughs> so, I know, okay, like it's super specific, right? I mean, this is a very um, niche chair, if you will. And so again, for a very um, niche chair, this is a lot of money to spend on a chair. I mean, this is almost $9,000 for a chair that's so specific, but it is something that I think is really fun. It's really playful. I love all of the bright colors. And even though, I mean, you all can see, my interior design aesthetic for this apartment is fairly neutral. It's like, a lot of whites, blacks, a little bit of tan and green, you know, that's it. And I feel as though this piece actually would work well because it would be like my one big pop piece. Like it would be the statement. And it's something that, I mean, it's just really fun and I really like it. I, I just, it's quirky and cool and I'm into it. But again, it's really expensive. And the other thing about this chair, and for those of you that are big Gucci shoppers, you all probably know this, because you've seen this chair in the store. They use it to decorate their stores. <laughs> this chair is so small. I feel as though the image makes it look like a proper size little armchair, but it's not. It's like three feet tall. So it is like a little nugget chair. And in fact, honestly, I mean, it feels like 
quite impractical in that sense because that means it's like really low to the ground. Now granted, maybe that's by design. Maybe it's because this was originally meant to be decor for the stores and they didn't want people like sitting too long and like old older folks probably wouldn't be comfortable in a chair that low to the ground. I don't really know. <laughs> It is a very small chair. I mean, when you break it down, I mean like it's in the thousands per foot in terms of the cost of this item. And so I mean, <laughs> this chair, regardless of the fact that I think it's really cute and really fun, it is just wildly impractical and not something that I am going to be buying anytime soon. Now here we have this absolutely beautiful set from Fendi with a cute little crop top and like a little like bodycon pencil skirt. And Fendi actually has a lot of sets like this. So honestly, it's not specific to this one. Although I do love this one because it is all white. I would love to get like a little fitted like top and skirt set from Fendi. And I would want the top to be cropped but when would I wear this? For those of you that either live in or have been to San Francisco, you know how casual it is here. I mean, casual in fact is an overstatement. It's cause it's like a big tech city. Like there are a lot of folks from Silicon Valley. And I mean, people just don't really dress up here. Also the weather here is pretty much the same temperature all year round. It ranges between like 50 and 65 degrees for most of the year. The only exception is in our late summer that we get in September and October. That is the hottest time of year. And that's where it might get up to like 80 something degrees. And so even if San Francisco was like a dressy place, I mean, it feels like relative to the weather and like the temperature that it is, this is really out of place. Now, if I lived, you know, like in LA or if I lived in Miami or if I even went to those places enough to justify the cost, then I would totally buy one of these little sets. I know they're expensive, but I seriously think these sets are so cute. I mean, they're just so like feminine and ladylike and dainty, and they're just all things that I love. And so I would love to have one of these sets, but unless I end up moving, I just, I really don't foresee myself buying one of them. Now also from Bendy is this gorgeous baguette bag that I saw in this really beautiful like snowy gray and white lizard print that I think is so special. Now I have a mini Fendi baguette, but it is the version that has like a little top handle and then also has a very long chain. It's not one of the ones with like the shoulder bag, like the short drop length. And I would really love a baguette in that size. And I mean, there are a lot of beautiful versions out there and I'll probably end up getting a regular version but I just cannot help but obsess over this lizard one because of the color and the texture. I mean, this is such a special bag. It is really different. It's not your typical Fendi baguette that you see, you know, all over the streets. And I just think it's really beautiful. But I mean, of course, exotics are very expensive, right? Like this is over $6,000 and I just don't know if I wanna spend over $6,000 on a Fendi baguette, but also, I mean, there is the question of the fact that it's exotic, right? And it's something that I personally always go back and forth on in my mind. Is it something that in a few years, am I gonna be really disappointed in myself that it's something I bought? Or is it something that like, I don't think is that big of a deal? I don't know. I've never really made up my mind on exotics, but I wish that exotics could like be exotics without actually being exotic because I love the texture that comes from like ostrich print, from croc, from lizard. And so while I think this is a beautiful baguette and like if I could have any one right now, this would be the one that I want. I just don't know because of the cost and because of like the, the ethics kind of associated with it, if it's something that I'll ever really buy. Now let's talk about an item that I feel like a lot of you all probably have and a lot of you all probably want too. And that is an iconic Chanel tweed jacket. Now, very similar to a lot of the items that we have talked about, obviously, there is the cost standpoint. I mean, one of the cheapest Chanel tweed jackets right now is about $5,000, but they're generally closer to about $10,000. So that is a pretty penny for, at the end of the day, it's just a jacket. But if I were to get it like in a neutral color, like black or navy or cream or white or something like that, it would obviously be something that's timeless, that's classic, something that would last me for the rest of my life. So I would probably get enough use out of it that. By the time I'm old and gray, like 80 years old, my little like walker, 
I will be flexing on people with my Chanel because I've got a great cost per wear, but it would take me decades to get to that cost per wear probably. Also, my other concern with a Chanel tweed jacket, and you're gonna laugh because it's one of the reasons actually that became so popular, is oftentimes the cut of Chanel jackets, it's more boxy, it's not as fitted, it's a little bit wider. Now, for those of you that are like Chanel history buffs, you all know that that's actually by design. That is why these jackets became so popular. Chanel was trying to go against, you know, the very feminine and ladylike silhouettes that were so popular back in her day. And so she wanted to create something a little bit boxier, a little bit looser, something that was more comfortable. So that is why Chanel jackets are so popular. But if I'm being really honest, I would like something that kind of goes in at the waist a little bit more. And that is because this is something that I mentioned probably in almost all my videos. I am very short, I'm five foot three, and I have like no torso. So the fact of the matter is that I need something to be able to cinch in a little bit. Now granted, I know that you can obviously get these altered, like Chanel does free alterations for the ready to wear pieces that you buy full price. But I feel like that's kind of like messing with a work of art. Like I wouldn't want to spend, you know, $10,000 on a jacket and then have to like alter it, like tweak it in, nip it in, because you never know how it's gonna turn out and mistakes can always happen. And then like, who knows, you could be, or can, you could just not like the way the jacket ends up turning out after all the alterations. So, I mean, you could be left with a jacket that was like 10 Gs and you're not even happy with the fit and the shape of it. So I have a lot of reservations. Now, if I could find a Chanel tweed jacket on the pre-loved market that was like in a neutral color and that I was really in love with the silhouette, then I'm all about it and would definitely snap it up. But just right now, in terms of buying one new from the Chanel boutique, probably not gonna happen. Now you all know how much your girl loves raffia. I love a good little summertime bag. I like raffia bags, I like straw bags. And obviously I don't like the ones that are like quintessential like raffia bags that just look like every other bag, right? Like that big straw, like Louis Vuitton that everyone has. There, there are a lot of variations. That's always what you think of when it comes to like a raffia or a straw bag. So I like ones that have like a little bit of like a different look and feel, but I still like them to be like multi-purpose that you can wear them in a lot of different situations. And I think that raffia bags are great in terms of like summertime, like going to the beach, going to the pool, just like going to the park, laying out. It's the perfect little vehicle to take your towels, some snacks, maybe a little bit of rosé and go relax. And so I really love this one here from Prada. And honestly, all of the different versions of raffia bags that Prada has been putting out the past few years. I love all of the different colors and I love that they're just easy. You know, they're pretty understated other than like the big logo, but like the shape is easy, right? It's not too complicated. It's not too overwrought like some straw bags can kind of be. So I love these bags. But again, this goes back to the price. These are almost $2,000. I am not spending almost $2,000 on what's like a glorified like grocery bag. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. Let's call a spade a spade. Like I have little reusable bags from like Whole Foods and Trader Joe's that probably are more durable than this raffia bag from Prada. And they cost me like what, $4.99? <laughs> so, I mean, if I could find one of these for like $500, yes, I then probably would pick something up like that. But for like fifteen, eighteen hundred, two thousand dollars, honestly, that's just too expensive for my taste in terms of what a raffia tote bag can be. And finally, we have come to an item that is something that I've wanted in so many different variations for a long time, and you all have seen me actually try this on on my channel also, and that is the Louis Vuitton Mini Capucines bag, and there are a few different variations that I love. Now, there's this one that I'm not 100% certain. I think it's from the Match collection, just like based on how it looks. I remember seeing it like a month or two ago. I wasn't sure if it was part of that collection or another one, but it's this gorgeous green and white woven version. But I think it's like six, $7,000, something like that. And I just, I don't wanna spend that much money on a Capucines bag. I think I would probably spend like three to four thousand dollars on a capucines bag but if i was going to do that it would have to be an all leather one 
obviously like this woven version, although it is a stunner, it's like such a showstopper. It's beautiful. And I love that it's different. It's a little unique in terms of like the world of Capucines. It's not going to be as durable as like an all leather version. And I could very easily see like this woven, you know, part of it, like getting a little pick or a little pull or something like that. And then y'all, I would be so mad if I had a bag that cost that much money and then it got like easily messed up because it's, you know, just woven together. So I'm not going to get that one, but it is one that I love. Like you all know, I'm obsessed with white and green. So like this is just... It's everything I want in a bag. So I love this one. There's also a really beautiful, like light, like creamy ivory color that has an exotic handle. I think that one is absolutely beautiful too. But again, I don't just go back to like the price of it, but also um, the fact that the handle is exotic. And even though I love the look and the feel of exotics, like, <sighs> is that something that I would hate myself for? I don't know. And then there are like some fully exotic versions and they're both in like this bright Kelly green color. You all have definitely seen these because these are often like on display in Louis Vuitton boutiques. It's either like the green ostrich or the green like croc or alligator ones. I mean, they are beautiful. Like they are just, oh, like they are such a beautiful shade of green. And oh, I don't know, maybe in a few years, I am going to be like, Lily, what were you thinking buying all of these green bags? Because Again, those of you that are in the family, you know, I've, I've been doing some work in terms of green bags lately, but I just, I love that shade. I think it's beautiful and I think it's timeless. So I would love to have those ones too. But of course, the cost of a fully exotic Louis Vuitton bag, whew, very quickly gets up into like the tens, 20,000s, especially for the alligator version. So in terms of price, definitely not gonna be getting it. But even if price was not an issue, I really just don't know about like the ethics and the morality of exotics. So it's something I go back and forth on. So I would love to hear your thoughts on like how you feel, obviously about everything in this video, but specifically about the exotic items. Like, am I overthinking it? Or am I just like behind the times? Like, are they totally passe, totally like wrong? Like I just, I don't know how to feel about it. So I would love to hear your thoughts on exotics down in the comments below. And also, I would love to hear about any unrealistic items that you all love, that you adore, but you know that you're either not gonna be able to get your hands on it, or it's way too expensive, or just like not practical for your life. So you have decided never to go after these items, because I'm sure I'm not the only one. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would really love it if you could just give this video a little like. Just give a little thumbs up down in the corner below, below. And if you haven't already, what are you doing? You need to subscribe to my channel. So that way you can get all my latest content about all things shopping delivered straight to you. Thank you again for watching. My name is Lily and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye everyone.